Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the sixth edition of the African Aviators webinar powered by Embraer. This is unbelievably the sixth edition. Thank you, everybody, for joining us here on Zoom and also on the Facebook group, too. Um, right at the start of the session, I just want to convey my personal thoughts and I'm sure the thoughts of the rest of our panel to the people of Ukraine. Um, it's a really, really difficult time. Uh, hopefully this will be a bit of relief for everybody to be out of, uh, out of the news cycle, but we're very aware of what is happening over there as, as much as anything else. For those of you who haven't met me before, I am John Howell. I'm the CEO and founder of Aviadev Africa. Um, we are a platform dedicated to developing African aviation. And uh, as always for this event, I'm joined by my co-host Chidozi Uzoezi and also Derek Naseku, who I will introduce shortly um, to you all. I would also, of course, like to say a massive thank you to our sponsors, Embraer. They've been an incredible support over this series. The whole series is now available to watch on YouTube. If you go to the Aviadev YouTube channel, you can watch any of them back if you've missed our previous sessions, um, which have covered cabin crew, air traffic control, flight dispatch, um, management, and also um, what was the what was the last one? Oh, pilots, of course, the very first one, of course, pilots, absolutely. So before we start and before I introduce my co-hosts and our panelists as well, I just wanted those of you who haven't been on this session before, want to give you. Um, a bit of overview of the housekeeping. It's only ourselves and our panelists that will have access to their cameras and microphones. So if you're joining, please let us know in the chat where you're calling in from. Um, use the Q&A for any questions that you've got. I'll be monitoring that through the session. Um, and we will also be monitoring Facebook as well. So those of you watching it live on the group, fantastic. It will be available again on catch up through the uh, Facebook group later on today as well, absolutely. So in terms of the format of the event, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce the panel. We'll do some Q&A with the panel and then um, we will, in about an hour or so, pause and we will take our uh, aviation quiz with some wonderful questions from uh, Chidozi, who's, who's prepared those. And there'll be prizes for the top three of you. What I would like you all to do, I'll say this now so I don't forget later, but I'll say it again. Please do use your real names when you enter the quiz so we can identify you at the end of the session. That would be great. So, um, yeah, absolutely. You know, without further ado, what I want to do now is introduce uh, Derek, who's one of our co-pilots for today, although he's actually the pilot, so he should probably be the captain rather than the co-pilot. Um, Derek is the founder and publisher of Airspace Africa, which is a great partner of Aviadev Africa. It's a dedicated online publication for African aviation. Um, make sure you go to the website and sign up for the newsletter and follow them on social media because they're breaking all of the relevant news for our wonderful industry. Um, Derek's work in media encompasses is both written and broadcast media. He has a recurring role at CNBC Africa and contributes massively to magazines and newspapers across the continent. Good morning, Derek, down there in Port Elizabeth. Morning, John. All good. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Excited for this episode as always. Uh, very valuable. And uh, thanks a lot to everyone in the audience who's taken the time uh, to come and join us today. Fantastic. Absolutely. And we'll hear lots more from you very shortly. And um, our other co-pilot, Chidozi, if you can start your camera and unmute yourself. Um, Chidozi Uzuezi, of course, is a massive, massive familiar face to all of you uh, out there on the, um, uh, in the group, because, of course, he is the founder of the African Aviation Group on Facebook, where we're live streaming this. Uh, I don't know how many members they have. It changes all the time, but it uh, must be up to nearly 300,000 members now. Of course, as you all know out there, the group provides insight, education, and a window to the world of African aviation. Dozy's also an aviation analyst. He's a prolific content creator. He's a newspaper columnist and a uh, in-flight magazine contributor as well. So uh, Dozy, are you there? Can you hear us? Maybe not yet. He's uh, he'll 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 get us. But right, Derek, let's start with you then. If you want to um, kick off and introduce your panelists, that would be fantastic. Uh, yes, uh, definitely. Uh, why not? Uh, so today we've got two panelists and uh, I'll start uh, with the lady first, of course, in gentleman fashion. Uh, first panelist I want to introduce is Carl Hello Mahasha. I uh, please just turn on your OK. Thank you so much. So Kauhelo hails from South Africa. Uh, she's 
famously known as Engineer Bay, a 28-year-old uh, from Pretoria. She grew up in a township called Atridgeville in Pretoria. And uh, she initially, she went to a technical high school, uh, which explains uh, the background that led her to where she is right now. She started out her career in aviation, Actonel Aviation in 2013, and uh, ended up uh, at South African Express Airways for on-job training, uh, where she eventually qualified in 2016. So Kaohelo later joined South African Airways Technical, uh, where her career eventually took off. She's been nominated for various awards and recognized for motivating young girls to take on male-dominated fields. She was actually voted number 29 in the top 100 most influential South Africans in 2020. Kao Hello, it's a pleasure to have you join us today. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. And thank you so much for having me. It's a massive pleasure. Uh, Dozi, thanks for coming back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, would you like to take the controls and introduce our next panelist? Uh, good morning, everyone from Lagos, Nigeria. I'm Chido Ize, like you already know. Uh, I'm glad to be here today. I'm very excited to be here today because this is especially this because we have um, we have um, one, one of the finest female AFE in Africa, in the person of Kahelo Mahasha, <laughs> Northern Africa. So I'm very Thank excited you. to see her today. Jonathan. <laughs> we also have another special guest, the CEO of Embraer, Commercial Aviation. I mean, it's a it's a huge privilege to listen to Ayan Maya today. Talk to us. I don't know what you asked today, but I'm sure she has some beautiful, good, exciting news for Africa. I, I, as, as far as I better. So, step up and listen to I and my addresses in the next couple of minutes. Uh, let me go to uh, the, uh, the second um, guest. Uh, who is uh, this is Olimide or Latinji from Nigeria, who is joining us from Zaria in Nigeria. And um, Olimide is an aircraft maintenance engineering student at um, Nigeria College of Health International in Zaria. If you don't know, Zaria is in Kaduna, and Kaduna is in the northern part of Nigeria. It's about an hour flight from Lagos State. So if you intend to visit um, Zaria Kaduna anytime soon, um, get ready to have a, an hour flight on APs, on Asman, on audio airlines to um, Zaria. Um, um, Olumida is one of the, uh, it's a very dynamic um, student and a very um, a popular person in the group. So we are going to be hearing from him today in terms of his experiences. Before I do ask your questions, Olumida, let me hand over control to John, who um, um, get us to listen to Ayan. Uh, this morning. John, over to you now. Thank you so much, Dozy. Thank you for the, uh, for the, for the intro. So um, yes, we, we have the uh, CEO of Embraer Commercial Aviation with us, uh, and it is actually a slightly pre-recorded session that was hosted by Derek and Dozy with my colleague, Yurai Todd, who is the, our managing director of our European operation of AviaDev Europe. Um, it's a really interesting little conversation. So we're going to share that with you now, and then we'll come back to the live the live session. So this is the first time that this um, this video has been shown. So enjoy uh, and um, yes, it, it, let us know what you think in the chat. Here we go. Hello, Ariano. Welcome to African Aviators webinar series. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. I'm pl a pleasure to be here and uh, looking forward. Yeah, thanks a lot for your, all your support. And we have uh, three quick questions for you. So we'll start with the Dozy. Dozy, over to you. Hello, good morning, everyone. I'm Chido Ize from Lagos, Nigeria. Once again, I thank you for joining us on this webinar today. Um, can you hear me? I I'm, I'm actually very, very excited, very elated, and almost very proud to say I'm being joined on this today's webinar uh, with uh, the CEO of Embraer, Ian Maya. Um, it's something I don't take for granted. Uh, before I go ahead, I'd like to say a few things about our group. The African Aviation Group is the largest aviation group on the internet on the African Air continent. We have about 300,000 300, members from all over the world, from our 101 countries of the whole world, from, 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 from Netherlands, from Nigeria, from Ghana, from Kenya, from Uganda, South Africa, from, from Germany, from China, from UK, from, from Brazil, from everywhere. So you have actually been reaching to millions and millions of aviators and uh, aviators from all over the world. Now, before I have a question again, the, the webinar series has produced a lot of good results. And there are, there are also two many other results we are expecting to produce in the next couple of weeks or months and years, which is why we're hoping that the government service will be renewed by Embraer. Now, my question is this, 
why did Embraer choose to support this initiative? Well, first of all, uh, uh, Z and Derek, thank you very much for, uh, for taking the time. Um, you know, engaging young people has, uh, has always been a, a passion for Embraer. Um, we, have, uh, we, we spend a lot of energy in attracting talent uh, from the grassroots. Uh, also for me personally, I've always been involved in, uh, in working with uh, young potential aviators, whether it's in junior school, senior school. And uh, I think uh, the, the relationship with AviaDAF has, has been great over the years. And um, we are very, um, very proud to support your initiative. We know how great and how big you are on Facebook, especially your personal account with the outreach to, uh, to young people. And we all know Facebook and social media is the way to get in contact. And if there's one big challenge out of the crisis that we're currently in, it is the access to good personnel. And uh, we already see the, uh, the first issues around the globe in, uh, in, in shortages. So uh, the best way to take that problem head on early enough is to really engage young people to take a job into our industry. So uh, this really goes back to the heart. This goes back to the, the passion of Embraer. And uh, uh, we're, we're very proud to, uh, to be involved with uh, AviaDAF to, uh, to, to see how we can help you reach out to the, the young aviators of the future. Are you happy with the results so far? Yes, absolutely. I think it's, uh, we're making good progress, but um, you know, we, we, there's, there's always uh, more that we need to do, right? As, as I said, the problem is huge. Um, so any, any additional initiative that we, uh, that we grow on this topic is, is, is helpful for all of us in the industry. All right, thank yeah. you, Mr. Ayan, for your generous answers. Over to Dan Derek. Yeah, Ayan, uh, we're very, very thankful for your support. And as Dozia has said, this has been very impactful and it's a very valuable initiative for, for the African continent. So we thank Embraer uh, for, for coming forward and uh, investing in the future. I think this might even affect uh, future fleet decisions on the African continent. I think it's a, it's a way for Embraer's brand to grow sustainably for the future. Uh, so uh, we, we are very proud to be associated uh, with Embraer right now as thank well. You and uh, 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 an OEM that's important for the African uh, continent, uh, your regional aircraft. Uh, you know, uh, uh, enabling Africa and our growth uh, going forward. Uh, now just look at the numbers even, last time I checked, more than 200 Embraer aircraft in Africa, more than 50 airlines operating Embraer aircraft. How do you view the African uh, aviation market and how important uh, is, is Africa to Embraer? Yeah, thank you, Derek. You know, Africa is uh, is a hugely important area for uh, for Embraer. Uh, we are the second OEM in that market. Uh, as you say, we have 200 aircraft uh, flying around, whether it's ERJ, whether it's E1s, and now also E2s. Um, so we've already shown that Embraer is a, is a, is a great product for the continent. Um, what we've seen over the last couple of years during the crisis is that the segment of the E-jets and the smaller aircraft are really helping uh, airlines to get out of the crisis. It's a way to reduce your trip cost uh, and to, uh, to work with the right unit cost and right profitability to get out of the crisis. Uh, we've been preaching uh, right sizing for many years. And I think um, Africa is, 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 a great, is a great example. Um, there's, there's a huge number of untapped destinations in Africa uh, that need to be connected with the right size of aircraft. If we look at our market potential going forward in the next 20 years until 2040, we are looking for a potential of 800 jets. And we believe Embraer will, uh, will take a, a significant share of that market going forward. Um, and that's just talking about the jets that Embraer is, is, is building and, and, and developing and, and delivering to customers around the world. Uh, I'm not even talking about eVTOL. I'm not even talking about the turboprop that we're talking about. Uh, that could come right on top of that. And we believe also those applications um, offer great potential. We've seen Kenya Airways uh, as an example of embracing the eVTOL together with Embraer. Um, so I think the jets, the turboprop and the eVTOL all have great potential to develop Africa for the future. You're right. Thank you, Derek. Also from my side, a massive thank you to you, Arjan, personally, and to whole team at Embraer for all your continuous support for all Aviadev projects, including this one, African Aviators Webinar Series. And my last, last question for today for you is, how do you see the future of 
of African aviation and the part Embraer will play in it? Yeah, I think it's it's partly what I just referred to, right? Um, Af the African market is 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 huge for Embraer. Uh, it's got it's got a big potential. Um, already being the second OEM today, uh, we believe we can we can keep that or grow even beyond that for the future. Uh, we have strong partners in the region with uh, with Airlink with a training center, Kenya Airways with a with a major uh, maintenance center, and as I just said, with a market of 800 aircraft uh, in the next 20 years, with the demand in Africa to really develop uh, across the continent, um, I believe there's a great future ahead of us, and uh, and Africa is a very important uh, continent for Embraer to grow in for the future. Fantastic, and we wish you all the success in your. African adventure for the years to come. And thank you again for all your support and all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ian. Okay, we're back in the room. Thank you so much. Great job, Derek. Great job, Dozy. Sorry I couldn't be there for the uh, for the recording, but uh, it was great second time round. So um, Derek, I think I want to hand the controls to you. And uh, if you want to, um, to kick off with the questions today, and I'm, I will be monitoring the Q&A in the chat as well for everybody else. So uh, over to you. Yeah, thank you again. And uh, once again, I'd like to start with the lady. So how hello. Uh, very, very amazing CV that you have there. Congratulations on all your achievements <laughs> and your journey so far. Thank you. Uh, yes. I, I, I want you to just tell us about uh, your journey in becoming uh, an aircraft maintenance uh, engineer. You know, I'm, I'm very curious, is this, the, uh, was this by design? Did you set out to become an aircraft maintenance engineer from the very first time you started dreaming about careers and dreaming about this industry? And what inspired you? What has helped shape your path uh, as on your journey to where you are right now? I think I've told this story so many times for some people it's going to be boring, but here we go. Um, I really was obsessed with cars. Like there's something about cars that makes me feel a different feeling. I would actually say compared to airplanes because that was my first love, cars, because my dad made me wash cars when the car mechanic was around, hand him the tool, you know, you're like the spinner girl just helping him out. And after that, um, I went to a technical high school where I did mechanical technology, which is where I learned the basics. It wasn't really that deep, but it really, really helped me realize that I actually like working with my hands and applying my knowledge in fixing something or understanding something. So what happened is that um, I finished my trick and I decided, yo, I want to take a gap year so that I can see what I want to do because the apprenticeship I applied for I didn't get it it was at a car um, manufacturing company and I just felt so sad and I was like I'm not gonna apply anymore you know when you give up I'm not gonna apply anymore I'm gonna take this year and I'm gonna just focus on my on building myself and maybe thinking about what do what is it that I really want to do because you know you become so demotivated that you think that maybe this isn't the path for me so let me try and sit down and See. So my brother, my cousin was actually an apprentice at Ford at the time. And he was like, no, there's an open day at Denel. Um, Let's go. He even came in the morning. Like he said, bath quickly. We're going. And I was like, why? <laughs> why are we going there? And then when we drove in, I saw airplanes. And I was like, this is interesting. Okay. My brother was like, no, I'm gonna, it's a whole, it was a career day where they were exploring all types of careers in aviation. They had pilots there, technicians there, and they were giving out forms if, in case you're interested so that you can apply to be a student there. And my and I was I remember sitting there and my brother just left me because he wanted to go look at other careers. So he left me and I was just so curious. And I stayed in this one section where they were talking about maintenance. And I just, I was filling in the forms. I even filled them in on that day and I submitted them. And then um, they called me back, I think a week later, they said, no, we have um, every student that comes in writes an aptitude test so that we can decide which trade you like inclined towards. So at the time I was like, no, uh, I found avionics very interesting and whatnot. So as we did the task, all the avionic tasks really, really, really messed me up. I couldn't understand the thing, but all the mechanical ones, I got them. And then I knew that, you know what? 
it's not that I couldn't be a car mechanic. God had greater plans. And in this case, that's how I ended up in Danal. I immediately signed up. I went that they offered me the course. I did it there. And then a year later, S Express was looking for students that were going to come and do their on-job training in their company, which they were at the airport in Oratambo. So we did the interview. I got it. I did my on-job training there. And then after that, I actually wrote my trade test at SAA Technical, which well, this is where the challenge began because at the time, people were qualifying but not getting jobs, which became very frustrating because you realize that, Joe, you spent so many years focusing on one thing or pouring yourself out. Because one thing about studying for these kind of courses is that they take time, they take all your time. And I'm not joking. You literally always studying, especially in that time where you want to study and you want to be a student. You really need to make sure that you have time. And so I couldn't get a job at the time. So I went from qualifying, thinking that I'm going to be a technician on the spot to qualifying and having to figure out what am I going to do next. So what happened is that um, S Express offered us a stop counting contracts whereby we had to do stop counts for them because they needed to know how much things they had and whatnot. So that was very depressing because I it was far off what I wanted, but I did it anyway because I felt like, you know what, it's still in the industry. I'm still walking into a hangar seeing an airplane. That gives me a little bit of hope that, you know what, there's something here, you know, just, just don't be in a hurry, but there's something. So after that, I applied for a contract at SAA. They were taking in contractors for small jobs, like a month, sometimes two months. And I did that for like a whole year, just like being called to work, going home, spending a month at home, not doing anything, then being called for a few months contracts, then being home until to a point where I applied and got a permanent job. That's when everything just fell into place. Very interesting story. And it's interesting how pieces just all come together. Uh, you know? It uh, is. It really yeah. is. Yeah, you can never really completely plan out your entire, your entire journey to the T, you know? But uh, I wanted to, to take you a little bit back now. Obviously, you've walked the path and uh, you've mm. gone through all the struggles. And, uh, you know, uh, is there something that you could have done? Uh, if, if, say, if, if I was to take you back in time, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, just just obviously to speak to the people who are looking at you right now, maybe they're inspired, the one uh, the one to take on uh, your path as well, the one to, the one to be like you, you know, is there is mm -hmm. this uh, is there anything that young people can do to prepare themselves, uh, you know, and perhaps to have a smoother ride than than even you did to go to where you are, yeah. I think one thing you could do is give yourself time. That's the one thing that I said, you know, being young, you want to have time for everything and anything in the world. And when you move into this industry, you kind of realize that you can't have that normal time that somebody else that's doing accounting is having. Remember, all our friends are in different fields. You literally maybe have to write every week or every second week and everything just you, you go from spending time with your friends and family to actually studying most of the time missing out on on those things that you used to do with your friends because you have an exam the next day so one thing is be flexible with your time and be willing to give your time to something that you love doing you can't go into it thinking everything will fix itself it's not that kind of career where things just fall into place because you prayed about it it's it's hard work it's constant hard work it's hard work that you put on every day and it's not hard work that you put in physically it's also hard work that you put in mentally with yourself what you tell yourself every day when you go to class what you tell yourself every day before you go in that exam room it's hard work it's literally hard work because the thing is we can stand out and motivate people to go into careers to be strong and whatnot but it also starts within yourself if you're brave enough and say, you know what, I'm going to do this. This is what I'm going to do. And this is what I want to accomplish in this time period. You always, always, always need to set yourself a time period. If the course is three years, tell yourself, I'm going to finish it in three years. Because one thing that's going to condition you, that's going to condition you to know that I don't have time to waste. 
I need to do this the right way the first time. And you're going to feel yourself get motivated. I didn't have that because I felt like, yo, I really want to be a teenager, you know, your early 20s. I really want to enjoy this early 20s. But then at the same time, I really, really wanted to get this. So I had to myself that no I can't it really sucks to tell yourself I can't do this now I have to do this but then like once you realize that um the rewards that you get from fulfilling what you want to do is actually better than anything in the world that's when you realize that you know what I've I put work within myself and I made this happen that's the best feeling ever I would actually make my time more flexible I would actually um motivate myself more I would actually learn how to speak things into a life in terms of saying, I'm going to pass that exam. I was always depressed before examinations. I, even though I studied, you know, and now when I look back, I'm like, but I studied. Why, why was I feeling so depressed walking into that place? I stayed up the whole night. I didn't even go anywhere. I was, it was me and that book. It was me asking that lecturer, please, please explain this to me. Because that's the thing. People don't want information anymore. You need to ask your teachers, your lecturers, even if it's your free time and you feel like oh, I'm not doing anything, open your books and try and figure out which module don't you understand and work on it. Because the thing is, once you qualify all those things that you felt like, oh, it was just a module, they creep up on you. I can I can definitely relate uh, with everything you've said. And that is just so inspiring. I think it's really, I 100% I believe it's your responsibility to motivate yourself and to mm. condition yourself. Uh, because you know all the other pieces are going to come and you have to be ready for them so I totally understand and nothing comes easy it's all about hard work no matter what the career like. is you know mm. and uh, aviation is no different so you know hard work pays definitely hard work is everything yeah I can see uh, 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 Dozy is, 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 has got some burning questions there Dozy uh, would you like to throw something at us <laughs> yes, please stay online with me. Uh, uh, hello, I have a couple of questions for you. Okay. Um, we, we can't say this enough. Um, you have an impressive CV, almost intimidating CV. And um, I used to think that pilots and Kabuki were the only beautiful ones in the aviation industry, but I, I know better. We also have very beautiful um, engineers in the aviation industry. So um, I, I'm sorry for thinking that way before now. Uh, my question is this. Um, mm -hmm. Who is an aircraft maintenance engineer? What do they do? And are they different from aircraft mechanics? No. Being an aircraft mechanic simply means that you hold the technical qualifications to work on airplanes, which is your maintenance, which is whether it's periodical or your daily checks or whatnot. And then aircraft maintenance engineers are actually, it's actually the same thing. As you study further, and it's also like a European standard whereby they call you an engineer and whatnot. But here in South Africa, when you get your certificate and everything, it's written aircraft mechanic. But we basically do the same things. But then the only difference is some will progress and become licensed engineers, that some will be supervisors, which will supervise the maintenance work that's being done. So it's quite not different. It's just that you advanced in your career whether in your pace or whatnot, but you keep on studying. The studying never stops. But basically what an aircraft maintenance technician does is to inspect, um, do uh, preventative maintenance alterations and to actually make sure that the airplane is airworthy before every flight. Right, thank you for those beautiful answers. Let me ask you one more. Um, okay. What are the available paths to become an aircraft maintenance engineer? Are there special or specialized uh, schools that offer AME programs? Or can AM be studied at conventional universities? Are there different certifications for different countries, especially in Africa? Hello. Um, I know about South Africa, we do have aviation schools. Some flight schools, I know Air 43 offers the course as well. And you get your own job training there as well. And then some airlines like SAA Technical, um, they actually have their own school inside the um, airport premises whereby you do your training and on-job training there within the company. With me, because I did it at Danelle, I moved around quite a lot, you know, but then there is also Mata, and Mata I think is in Kempton Park, which actually does the training for aircraft maintenance um, engineering. 
right um let me let me let, let me be um, um let me be emphatic on this question can we study ame at conventional universities like University of lagos University of pretoria University of ghana or mm -hmm. are there specialized schools for this the thing is you need on job training and you need the hours and you need to familiarize yourself with um Arab Are you there? The CAA laws. So it's quite, you need to go. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Kahela. Go ahead. Okay. I was saying that um, I know this. I, I saw a QA where somebody actually asked um, they did um, mechanical engineering, but they need further training. Brilliant. I would actually say yes, because you need um, the hours working on an airplane before you do your trade test as well. So it's a trade. You're a trade person when you're an aircraft technician. So you do need um, your hours and training on airplanes to qualify for, to do your trade as well. All right, thank you, Kahelo. I have uh, one or two more questions for me. Let me go to Olimide. I'll come back to you much later. Thank yep. you, sir, for your generous answers. Olimide, are you there? Olimide, can you hear me? Hey. But, uh, please tell us why did you decide to why did you decide to engineering? Well, um, it started when I was young. I was seven years old then when my primary school then took me on an excursion to the airport. So it was during the excursion I developed interest because we entered into aircraft and that was when I developed interest in aircraft maintenance engineering. And at, what point, was, at what point in life was this? That was uh, when I was seven years old. Did you say seven? Yes, seven years old. So for you, the book came early, as early as yes. seven years. Okay, yes. so tell us yes. more. Tell us more about the story. Okay, um, that period was in 2006. You know, there was this frequent air crash in the Nigerian aerospace. That's so Soliso Max. ADC, so, Bellevue. Uh, yes, yes. So I was like, oh, seems like the engineers are not doing their job properly. So I would like to be an engineer to stop all this mess. And that was how it started. And since then, wow. I've been not checking till now. I still love aviation. To the extent wow. that whenever it flies overhead, I still look at it with so much admiration. Right. Every day I go to just to look at aircraft. Like, it's just something that is part of me. I'm so I'm so I'm so excited. I'm so impressed in your reason for becoming an, an AME. There was a time we had a frequent crash in Nigeria, Soliso, Bellevue, ADC. And they wanted to put a stop to this. I wanted to become an AME. That's a very heroic and um, inspiring uh, um, uh, motive behind your choosing AME. Well, let me ask you a little bit there. Uh, what are the challenges you're facing or you face while looking for admission to, uh, into NCAT? And what's the admission process? I'm sure that people are listening to you who wants to become AME like you. Tell us your admission process. What are the challenges you first want to do AME in Nigeria? Well, let me know. Uh, okay, sorry. Um, to some of the challenges I faced to get into this school is just finance. That's the major challenge because to okay. study aircraft engineering in this school, it requires a whole lot of money. And surprisingly, I'm the one sponsor myself. Yeah. Uh, I had to go into farming and that was permitting to sponsor myself here in this school. And the thing is, I had admission in 2017 to study standard aircraft maintenance engineer, but I lost admission due to lack of fund. Because of financial uh, difficulties. Okay. okay, before I continue, I would like to go back in time. Now, in this school here, we have two types of aircraft maintenance engineering course. We have the standard and the okay. degree. Now, the standard is just like you're going for a, a conventional nursing school where you get a nursing diploma and okay. RN, that's how the standard is. You get NCAT diploma as an aircraft engineer and it is for 120 weeks. The qualification is just your O-level results. That's for the standard. While the other one is you need ND in either mechanical engineering or aircraft maintenance engineering. Now, the ND for mechanical engineering is for those that are going for FM and power plants, A and P, while the other one 
which is the avionics that's electrical parts you need ND in electrical engineering or computer engineering to go for avionics now so right, for, um, your... uh, for, for, for for one of time um i don't even understand what i'm saying uh aircraft airframe sounded like drones so that's my field but tell us a little bit uh, what's the what's the mission process what to become an aim in this area how do i apply how do i get taken what, what do i do i want to know all those details now to to apply number one your qualification your minimum qualification is whole level okay. now if you're in, you can come in either through nd that's nd in aircraft maintenance engineering or you're coming through hnd hnd in aircraft maintenance engineering or you're coming through the standard aircraft maintenance engineering course now the standard class your minimum qualification is whole level only for your hnd your minimum qualification should be nd nd okay okay national now your national diploma must either be in mechanical engineering nd or electrical en electrical engineering okay yeah or aircraft maintenance engineering nd that's if you go to school like AFIT, air force institute of technology they will give ND in aircraft engineering. Even NCAT also gives ND in aircraft maintenance engineering. Now, with your ND certificates, you apply for HND. That's the degree. Now, if you are coming into HND, you go for two options: either A and P, which is airframe and power plants, or avionics, which is the electrical part of an aircraft. Okay. So, that's if you are coming with your ND certificate. ND, ND, okay. Give you. You, you you'll be joining hnd as a amp engineer or an avionics engineer all right thank you for that let me ask you again what are the practical steps are there are there people can go and buy from is it at NCAT or do you not make an announcement on television on newspapers how do you know what time of the year did they announce uh, vacancies for ame students okay now to get your form you go to you come to this school that's okay. the uh, office here in zaria Okay. Alternatively, Lagos Licensing Office, located at the fan headquarters in Lagos. Oh, okay. Then you also go to Abuja office. They also have an office in Abuja where you can get the form. All right. What time of the year are these forms out? The forms is always available all year. Always, round. always available. Yeah. All right. Thank you, oh. Olimde, for those generous. Uh... Yeah. Okay, one more thing, yeah. right? Okay, I'm listening. Yeah, you're coming in through ND. You need yeah. a jump, jump. Um, you need a jump. And your minimum is one hundred and twenty max. One twenty. Yes, yes. And secondly, for the jump, you need um, English, mathematics, physics, and chemistry. That's the papers you'll be writing for the jump, and the minimum cutoff of one hundred and twenty. That's for the ND only. You need jump. Okay. All right, thank you. I'll have a few more questions for you. I'll, I'll let me go to Kahelo in South Africa before I come up to you. I can hand over controls to Derek. Kahelo, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello, can you hear me, Kahelo? Can you hear Can you hear me? Yes, Hello? I can. Can you hear right. me? Yes, right. I can. Uh, right, right. I, oh, oh, you can't. I can hear I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Right. Uh, obviously, AME is a, it's a med dominated industry, in everything, like you're having piloting and um, other forms of engineering. AME is med dominated. Now, from your own experience, how does the world receive female aircraft maintenance engineers? Do your med colleagues sometimes um, feel intimidated by your audacity, or are they always helpful? Can I hello? Um, it's a sometime thing. It's really a sometime thing because people are different. There's people that feel that women should be in a particular place. And there's people that actually, when you walk into this space, they appreciate you. They want to teach you. They want to welcome you with open arms. And they're actually hopeful that you'll make something better of your career than what it is. I've had luck of actually working with people that actually places where I have people that are jealous or that make me feel 
feel like I'm, you know, the weakest of the group. So I, and also it's the mentality that you will tell it to, oh, already I'm going to be judged. You know, I, my energy is giving off positivity. I don't care and whatnot. It's easy for people to attack your character. It's easy for people to make you feel like you don't deserve. And that goes for any career. Because now women are going into law, which used to be like, if you're a woman, people think, how are you going to handle a case in court or something like that? So it's a confidence thing. If you're confident and people can see that you take your work seriously, no one can put you down. Hello, can I hear me? Can I hello? Yes, I can. All right, from what I'm saying, it's actually not a lot of people for from the male folk. All you need to do is be confident, and when you're confident, the sky is your limit. Uh, thank you so much, Kahelo, for that generous answer. Um, I hand over control to my co pilot, Nan Derek. Derek, over to you. Yeah, I'm all for confidence as well, Eric Kahelo. I, uh, yes. I, truly, I truly believe in your message. Uh, but just, just to come right back at you uh, before I proceed, I, I, look at, I tend to look at the career journey in about three different phases. Before, okay. you, before you get into the, the institution, uh, then the whole education phase, and then uh, obviously you get, you get to employment and you've gone through all of that. Uh, mm -hmm. So I just, I just wanted to know uh, for the benefit of everyone, obviously, what, what, what have been your biggest challenges in navigating the, the whole path uh, until uh, to the point that where you are right now, what, uh, what, what, what have been the biggest challenges for you? Um, the biggest challenges have been actually, you know, okay, for me as a female at my age, I don't have the same time as my peers that are in different careers and everything. So I'll start going down. As, I'm, as I was working up when I got employed, I didn't have a lot of time. So it kind of started to just stress me out. How do I work around this? How do I, you know, because now the dream that you dreamt about, you have it now, but now you start complaining, which is kind of what every human does so i just learned to appreciate the fact that you know what this is what i wanted and this is how i'm and i learned how to make time for myself i learned how to navigate around everything and the other challenge of the qualifying is the fact that you you become scared like the minute you have the qualification in your hand you realize that the real responsibility begins nobody's going to be watching you over your shoulder anymore and saying no not that way this way you literally have everything on your shoulders and you really need to learn how to be accountable which is what i always say that you know what this career requires you to be accountable in terms of if you make a mistake don't keep quiet if you're working on something and you break something don't try and just fix it you know you need to talk to your senior you need to tell him you know what and you know what, it's okay things happen so the other thing, that's the one thing that um, I learned. I learned to be accountable as soon as I got my qualification. You know, I'm that person, if I break something, I'll speak up right now. If something goes wrong, I'll speak up right now. And I also learned to be assertive. You know, like when you're a student, you just, you take everything as it goes. If the senior person says to you, you know what, this is the way it's done. When you're learning, you can't challenge that. But as you qualify and you know your procedures, you know how it goes, you can get somebody from another airline telling you, no, this is not how it's done on our airplane. This is what you need to do. You really need to learn how to say no, because at the end of the day, you are putting your name down to saying this airplane can go. And there's repercussions for you doing that, knowing very well that um, it's not actually supposed to be done like that. Becoming a student, the challenge was um, I was far away from home for the first time in my entire life. I've never lived a week away from my parents. So learning to live alone, learning to, you know, not submit to peer pressure because now you're not at home. You know, when you're not at home, you're in the rest. We're all coming from different places. We behave differently. We do things differently because remember, you're a big group when you study. But then you find when you guys qualified, this group has gotten smaller. And it's because of, you know, some people say, oh, this is not for me halfway. Some people get so demotivated that they give up halfway. And now that thing affects you as much as you feel, I'm, I'm still going to do this. I'm still going to do this. You just kind of sit down and say, yo, but she gave up or he gave up. What makes me think? 
So you get a lot of challenges. It's peer pressure. It's the fact that you're away from home. Your mom is not there to tell you don't do this, do this properly. So to learning how to stand on my own, that was quite a big challenge. And through my OJT, my biggest challenge was now the people that I'm with are qualified and they also different, you know, I mean, um, when you doing your on job training, you will meet people that will tell you, oh, you're a female. Why, do, why did you choose this career? That's the one thing they'll ask you the most, because that's the time where you're learning everything, you're making your first big mistakes. You are you shaking because now you're on the real thing. That airplane is about to fly and they're telling you do this, do this, but they're watching over you. So you kind of need to learn how to get used to that pressure that, you know, this person is actually here to assist me, not judge me. But at the same time, you do get those people that will tell you, why didn't you become an air hostess? Why didn't you become a pilot? Trying to, and you know, it gives you that second thought thing. You're laughing, Derek. Somebody told me I should have been an air hostess. <laughs> You're so pretty. Why didn't you just become an air hostess? You just want to come and get your nails dirty. Yeah. Why did you do that? So it's a lot of voices that you need to deal with, that you need to block out. Why and did you become a pilot? Like, <clears throat> <laughs> I've yeah. never even thought yeah. about it. <laughs> I have okay. nothing against them also. <laughs> yeah, you're very close though. Anyways, and uh, yeah, it's always interesting, uh, by the way, to, uh, uh, to see uh, ladies playing the role that you're playing. Uh, so that's something mm -hmm. that you touched upon, obviously. Uh, across aviation, I think most, most of the fields have that, that, those gender stereotypes attached to them. And uh, I mean, it's not just females alone, but there's definitely not enough people who are looking at uh, aircraft maintenance engineering as a career. Uh, what, what, what do you feel though, uh, uh, in your opinion, uh, that we should do to, to get more people interested in the field? Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I don't know about other countries, but I specifically feel that if my brother didn't drag me to the career day, I wouldn't have known about the career. And I still feel today that I don't see these careers being exposed as much, especially in places like where I live in Etchichel. I wouldn't have known because even the drive, I felt like, where are we going? Why is it so far? Like, And you know, people are using social media for the wrong things. And I know that there's pages like yours that try and open up doors for people to learn about these careers and whatnot, but people are just simply not using social media for the right reasons. So um, I feel that it, I love initiatives like this because people know that these careers exist. Because sometimes you'll tell a person what you do, what is that? You know, but if you tell somebody I'm a lawyer, they already know what you do. If you tell somebody I'm an accountant, they already know what yeah. you do. But then you tell them name one accounting firm, they don't know it. But with you say name one airline, they know all the airlines, but they know nothing around what happens in there. So I think we need to just keep on building the interest in people, keep on building the curiosity. And I'm hoping that somebody watching this that's very curious into what is it that they do, you know, go to YouTube, you watch videos. That's the other thing that I do after going to that career day. I watched videos of how they work, what they do, um, the CAA. I, I got curious. It built some kind of curiosity in me that I really wanted to know what is this about and why haven't I known about it all this time? Because if I knew, I wouldn't have wasted my time because I wasted a whole year. <laughs> I would have done something about it. So I think we still need to build curiosity. People need to be curious about it and want to know about it and I think career days need to come back whereby we have different stalls in one big place where you have your pilots on the one side your air traffic controllers on the one side I think all those things need to come back and I think maybe people are scared now because aviation took a knock recently because of COVID but I feel that it's bouncing back I don't think anyone that goes into this career now would be wasting their time because I think that's the pe the people's biggest fear that traveling is closing down and whatnot. But if we bring back those events, if we bring back the air shows as much as we used to, I think people will build curiosity and they will want to be in these fields. One hundred percent. And thank you for those last remarks. They, I mean, the industry is definitely going to bounce back. We're not going to be in a crisis forever. Yeah, but uh, on, on, on your point of aviation awareness, it is everything. And uh, 
I mean, that just justifies as well uh, uh, our reasons for, for studying this webinar series. And I really hope that uh, someday uh, there's going to be an aircraft maintenance engineer who will be like, you know what, my interest was was sparked or it was enhanced uh, the day I watched Kawe Hello uh, yeah. speaking and, the, you know, on the, on the mm -hmm. webinar series, you know. Uh, that's that, that's really what we're trying to create down the road and uh, thank you so much uh, for those insights Carl. i really appreciate that my pleasure yeah and uh olumi day uh, i i don't think i've had the pleasure of speaking to you yet yes yeah thank you so much uh by the way i i really love your gear that you're wearing you almost look yeah, that you're wearing you almost look you almost look like an astronaut you almost look like an astronaut Thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, you spoke about your journey, and uh, I really appreciate where you've come from and, and your insights as well, the way you broke down uh, your, your field. Uh, that was very insightful. Uh, just, uh, I mean, I just want to get to know, to know you a little bit more and, you know, your career aspirations. And as well, just for the benefit of people who are going to get into your, 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 your career field. You know, as a pilot, uh, I mean, you could be a bush pilot or you could be at a charter company and you, you're aspiring maybe to join the airlines, you're aspiring to, you know, there's always a step up down the road, you're aspiring to be, uh, you know, a captain of something. So I just want to know what, what are your aspirations, what's your end goal, you know, what's coming next uh, after this and where do you hope to go eventually? So just to give us an insight into, into the path down the lane as well. Okay, thank you very much, Fred. Um, the thing is, I I always hate to work for people. Like, right from time, I don't like to work for people. I, I believe in working for myself and being the CEO and the owner of wherever I work for because I love flexible time, I love to travel, and I love to visit places. So my aspiration down the line is to own an airline, like, my own personal airline where I will employ people and build people, like build what I call human capacity. Because I discovered that in Africa, the aviation industry, to get into it is very, very difficult. And many people find it very hard to sponsor themselves to school. So my aspiration is to set up an airline, like a low-cost airline in Africa, whereby I will build capacity, send people to school, and they work from the airline to build it up, to have one of the first of its kind in Africa. So that's my aspiration. Very, very ambitious goals there, Lomide. And thank you for sharing uh, uh, that with us. Uh, something else I wanted to ask you, uh, because I'm very curious how someone gets down to choosing, uh, to making your kind of career choice, you know? For example, you know, there's so many different careers in aviation, you know, uh, someone could become, uh, uh, you know, a, a flight attendant, a pilot or whatever it might be, you know, uh, what, 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 how do you zero down on, uh, uh, you know, on AME as a career choice and, and what would you advise people in, in making these career choices, what, what drives these choices and what do you feel should drive these career choices from your, from your own perspective? Oh, uh, well, you know, the aviation career is very broad and so many people, whenever they think about aviation, the first thing that comes to mind is pilot or aircraft engineer or cabin crew. There's still some other aspect of aviation. So to me, what should drive your career choice is your personality. Like, I love to travel. I can as well be a pilot so that I can travel places every day. I can as well be a cabin crew so that I can as well travel places every day. If I if I have this customer, this human kind of relationship, like I know how to talk to people, so I can be a, a, a airline ticket as well, I'll be at the ticket counter, talking to people like, oh, you're working and likes even having to get spanners you love to fix things definitely aircraft engineering is your field if you love to travel you love to fly you love to be you're not afraid of heights you can go for cabin crew or pilots and if you have enough fund to to become an airline owner fine you can go into it 
So to me, it should be your personality, what you are, should be what should drive your character. Because you will discover that there are so many people that started out as a pilot, um, as an aircraft engineer, or a cabin crew, and they end up flying. Because that was their personality. They want to be a pilot. Maybe because there was no funds to go for it from the passport, and they'll start from somewhere before they get to the goal. So to me, it should be your personality, what you really, really, really love. Absolutely, man. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, align your personality, align uh, your qualities uh, with the career. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for that Olumi day. And uh, I think uh, that's all from my end. I uh, don't see. I do have one more question for Olumi day. Hello, can you hear me? Say Olumi Olumi day. Clearly. Right. You did say, I love your, your, your aspirations are good. They're actually very tall ones. You did say we'd like to own an airline eventually. Because when you do, make me the CEO. <laughs> right. right one last question. I would like to create a contest with someone's question um, in the chat box. Wanjira or Wanjiwa Kafula, please forgive me for modeling your name. Wanjiwa Kafula from Zambia. She said when they began their class in Zambia, there were 25 students in their class. And eventually, only 16 graduated. And out of those 16, only 10 got their diploma. And out of those 10, only five got their licenses. So let me ask you this question. Um, I know you have only done your first year in, in, in the school. Um, from your own personal experience, is this AME program, is it a, very, is it a terribly difficult discipline to study? OK, thank you very much, sir. Um, you know, one thing about AME is our instructors just tell us that the standard there is very high because they don't want us to go into the industry and fumble. They even tell us that in education, everyone is a lawyer of its own. That's why we do LO. Because if anything should happen, you are responsible for anything that happens. For you to release an aircraft to fly and it eventually crashed, you'll be questioned and you face the panic itself. No one is gonna be there for you. Now. The, if the industry, even they do tell us to always own up to our mistakes. If you do something, oh, there's a snag here. Okay, while I was fixing this, it got broken. So that the airline can replace any part that is broken immediately. Yeah, like Hello, yeah, like Hello but rightly said. Say again. Yeah, I forgot what Hello said a few minutes ago. You're right. Like she said a few minutes ago, Kahala is South Africa meme. Exactly. So exactly. when you do something, you own up to it. Exactly. Very, very important. Very, very important. So as it is now, that's what makes the, um, the career part very, very difficult because they do tell us also that a doctor can kill just one life or an aircraft engineer, just a hundreds, destroy hundreds of trees and properties and everything. So it's very, 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 very difficult and with high standard, but it's not difficult if you really want to do it. Because I believe one thing about life, if you are determined to do something, there's no stopping you. You, can, you should be able to go any length to do it. Most people, they just come into this career path for for the fund. Yes, there is money in it a lot. Like, you get paid a lot. But they, they, they didn't come here for the passion, for, for the love they have for it. That's just the main thing. So the reason why it's like that, when most of them fall along the path is maybe they, 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 they lost interest in it or maybe due to one issue or the other. So the, the, the industry, like I said earlier, is a very, very tough part. You really need to have passion for it. You need to be passionate for it. While here, right. I don't sleep. I read all night. All night. So it's something that you really, really, really need to study very hard. Most of my friends said I became snobbish. I stopped talking to them because I came to school. They don't really know how it feels like to be in an aviation school. They will never they understand. Think, exactly. So that's that the... the, the the minimum cutoff is 75. That's the minimum pass mark for the standard class. So imagine you doing a, 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 a course that you score over 100 and you need to have 75. It means you really, really need to study. And not only that, when it's time for the license exam, that one is another ball game early. That's why you have to go for some a field experience, like an OJT on the job training, to get practical right. knowledge before you go for the license exam. If you don't have it, you can't pass the license exam. It's not possible. So those All are right. some of the... All right. Thank you, Olimde, for the insightful answer. One last question. 
what are the everyday challenges you face as a student of aircraft maintenance engineering? Uh, the everyday challenges is just one. One? Read. Oh, is that? Just to read. Just to read? You know, you don't read. When your exam comes and you don't pass, you definitely fail in. There is no two ways about it. All right, you've heard from the horses. You've heard from the horse's yeah. mouth. Uh, if you're an AM student, whatever you are, if you intend to be an AM student, whatever, just one thing, read, read, and read. Thank you, Olympia, for those generous answers. Let me go back to Helen now for the last uh, question for her. Kayla, are you there for me? Yes, I am. All right. Um, from your from your answers to um the questions a couple of minutes ago, I can understand there are see so many um, challenges facing um, female folk in the African industry, whether it's in America, or in Europe, or in Asia, or in Africa, everywhere they are, they face challenges. So let me ask mm -hmm. you this question. Um, um, do you think Africa has enough, or has produced enough female AMEs? Or do you think, uh, do you encourage more women to go into this profession? Kahela? Um, if someone like me can still say I'm the only female in my department, then we haven't produced enough. Wow, that's I a huge think challenge. So. That's a huge challenge. Yeah. When somebody says I'm department. the first, yeah, or I'm the, then we, we're really moving quite slowly. So I'd love to see more females. I guess we have, I guess we have more female pilots than AMEs in Africa. Yeah, yeah, I think female. I've seen a, a lot of females. But not a lot, a lot, but like their numbers are increasing way more than um, aircraft maintenance engineers. So females are going more into your pilot courses than the engineering one courses. Yeah. All right, so would you, would you like to encourage more females to join you? Yes, <laughs> I would, you know, and I remember like some people I asked, why don't you do this? And then they'll say, yo, it looks like hard labor. It looks like, you know, if you do something the way the manual tells you to do it, you'll find that it's easy. Procedures are there to protect you. Procedures are there to make life easy for you. So it's kind of, you read a lot. As you do any task, you need to read, go over the what you need to do, the CPs you need to pull and stuff like that, they make life easy for you. And also the other thing is that you have a team of people that you're working with that will never let you down. So I think, you know, women don't want to do hard labor or maybe they're encouraged against like, or they're made, they're made to think that, yo, this is hard labor. You're going to be changing wheels every night. You know, there's things that go around that I hear that are scary like if you ask somebody or somebody asks you so you're an aircraft maintenance engineer and you say yes they say oh so you 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 change the engine alone and you're like yeah <laughs> who said that <laughs> you know this thing so i think we very misinformed and also people are told that being a pilot is glamorous those people work very hard and then you find that now people do the course halfway and realize the pressures of being a pilot, what is needed for you to be a pilot. So I think research really will help everybody decide which careers they want to go to. If you want to do anything, research about it first, find out what it takes. Ask yourself, am I willing to do this? Does my personality and this job link? Because the thing is, you, you could be a different person and your job could require you to be a different person. Like for me, I don't talk too much. I'm not a people person. I but I interact with less people at work. But you find somebody that's a lawyer. You need to talk to different people every day. You need to be a people person. So for me, it gels very well because I have my group of people at work that I see every day that I talk to. And if I had to work in a place where I have to talk to somebody different every day, I don't think I would cope. But it's it's a personality versus the career that you want. Also, it's how are you willing to go? Are you a hard worker? I mean, we all know ourselves. If you, guys, you can't be out there do, go, doing courses every six months, then this line of work is not for you. It's a con. All right. Thank you very much. Hello for your generous answer. So if you're listening to us and you're a female, please do see your steps and go buy your form for every day any program. Yes, I was already saying thank you to Kahelo for those answers. Can you give me Kahelo? 
Wow. That was, that was incredible. I think the thing, the thing for me was just the drive and the commitment shown by both of our panelists today to, to get where they are. And, um, you know, we've said this multiple times, but obviously this is one element of trying to learn about what it actually entails. And you've asked a lot of the questions that have come through on the Q and A there's loads of questions actually in the Q and A, but I was looking through and I think a lot of them were answered during the course about what's the path. There's a couple there that are quite interesting, slightly more technical. Um, one is about sort of FAA, EASA. So, you know, maybe this is one for Olu because he's very much, he's in the know on these things. So Olu, in terms of, um, do you, you know, the, 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 requirement and the qualification that you're going to get does that then is that able to be converted to FAA and EASA for those who are um, watching this and want to know what that is the FAA is the is the US regulator and Europe EASA is Europe so if you wanted to work in those markets and if you have one of those can you come and work in Africa so can you give us a bit of bit of in, insight into that all right thank you very much sir. um you know to work Every country has the civil aviation authority that governs it. In Nigeria, it's called Nigeria's Civil Aviation Authority. The FAA is basically for the United States Federal Airport uh, Authority, while the ESA is for European Airspace Authority. So if you're coming into Nigeria with your FAA and ESA, you need to write the Nigerian ELO to make you familiarize yourself with the laws, that's the aviation laws in Nigeria before you can work. And they'll give you an expertise license to work in Nigeria together with your FAA license. So that's what I talked about. Is that, exam, is that exam, a technical exam? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yes, and vice versa. So if you've got a Nigerian qualification, you want to work in the US, you've got to do the qualification over there as well. So they're not yeah, interchangeable. Know, the thing is, um, FAA and the ESA seems to be the well, I think one of the highest aviation aircraft maintenance and general license. So if you are coming with another country's license to those places, you need to go write their own error also and get their license for you as an expert. So that's how it works. Okay. And, and the other question that we had was about transitioning. So if somebody's got a degree in a different subject, can they, you know, if they didn't have the passion like you did at seven years old, if they sort of had gone down the different route and then they say, do you know what, actually, I fancy doing mechanical engineering, but I don't want to go back to the start and have to do, do this. Can they transition across? So I think somebody said they have a, a, a qualification in biology. Can they take that? Yes, you have a diploma in that and it will get you slightly higher up the ladder to get into a maintenance engineering course. Um, not at all, not at all. You okay, have, to, you have be to start again. Technical field to be able to come into the aircraft at night, or you have to start afresh. Okay, and let's let's um, ask this question because we a couple of people have asked. So this is for both of you: the aircraft that both of you actually are are working on or rated on, and your dream aircraft that you'd like to work on as well. So maybe you know, uh, maybe Olu, if you kick us off on that, and then we'll come to Kahelo. Okay, oh, yeah, 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 you, let's say, for example, the thing is, when you're getting your license, it's just like a license, but you need to be rated on different aircraft on that license. Now, the license is just like the, the let's say, the Bible, then the ratings is for different aircraft. You have ratings on Boeing, you have ratings on Airbus, and the type of Boeing, let's say you have, um, you have Boeing 747, so you need to get another ratings from Boeing 737 before you can work on a Boeing 737 as a qualified aircraft engineer. So you, you need ratings is different from the license. The rating is what you put on your license. So that's how it works. And what's your dream aircraft to work on? Um, well, I've always loved the Airbus A380 because of its massive size and... Oli, well, you're supposed works. to say Embraer. You're Embraer, to... what's it, Embraer? <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the, reason, the, the thing is, that's for the large body aircraft, but I love Embraer, like, it's, it's a new, it's a new, uh, they have new aircraft. Top technology. Have, exactly. So, they, the, the, the technology on it is top notch, and, you know, it's something that is not yet new in Africa. So, I would love to have a ratings on that. I love that. So, that I come into the industry, because it's new, 
And for that, with years of experience, it can give me a huge leverage when more airlines start getting these aircraft. Fantastic. And they're, and they're coming. They're coming, absolutely. Have, have you had a chance to work on an Embraer aircraft so far? Uh, uh, no, no, not at all, not at all. Because while I was in Nigerian Air Force, then that was in 2018, I never had any encounter with Embra at all. Embra. Well, there's there's plenty in the Nigerian market. There's a new one. Is it XE Jet? They took a one one of these this week and yeah. a 145. And um, obviously there's 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 uh, there's Air Peace with their E2s, etc. So and Josie like knows the Nigeria full list. Nigeria with E145. Yep. So breast of more are coming, Olu. More are coming. So um, we're going to start the quiz in a minute, but Kahelo, if you can still hear us, if you if you can get your um, your internet was kind of in and out, but I think you, you're good at the moment. So um, what about okay. you? What are you rated on? And what is your kind of dream aircraft to work on? Um, I'm currently not rated on air, any airplane, but I work for a maintenance organization. So we work on different airplanes every day because we have customers in South Africa and outside of South Africa. We work on the PA men liner, we work on Lufthansa, we work on Turkish, we do Kome, which is your British Airways in Kulula. So um, I would love to be rated on actually all of them because I'm so greedy. But the one brand that I love is Airbus. I love their 350. I got to work on it when Qatar was flying to Joburg when I was in Joburg at the time because now I'm stationed in, in Cape Town. So I, I really love the 350. It's more advanced. The technology is up to speed. And Embraer, I have flown a couple of times with it. I haven't worked on it. Um, A-Link uses them. Um, I've flown in their jets. They're very nice, spacious, and smooth. <laughs> but right. I haven't worked on them. Good, good answer. Good answer. 